I hope you're doing well today. I, I feel like I'm doing well. I hope you're doing well also. Hey, uh, we're going to dive in into our, our third week of our series, Core Values. And uh, before we do that, can we give it up for everybody watching online right now? Listen, we are so glad you're watching. I know we got like a, we got like a church family online, like an online church. And so we're so excited you're watching. We're, we're pumped and hopefully God's going to speak to you some way, form or fashion. Hey, listen, before we really dive in, don't forget today starts community groups, all right? If you have not signed up for a community group, you can go to the app and you can do that, okay? So sign up for a community group somewhere, all right? Don't take this for granted. I promise you, it will help change your life and you'll meet your best friends you never even knew you had, all right, at these community groups. So go and be a part, all right? Hey, listen, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to do like we have the last two weeks. If you haven't been to this series yet, basically core values is basically who we are as a church. I'm hoping and praying that that it will help you as an individual when you go outside these four walls as part of the body of Christ. But honestly, these are core values of our church, of Desperation Church. And so um, it is who we are. It's what we're about. And so that's what we're talking about. And I'm hoping and praying that that is going to help you discover more about Desperation Church. And, and honestly, it's not really about Desperation Church, it's about what we do for the kingdom of God. So if you're a guest here today, is this like you're one of your first times to come to Desperation Church? This will help you understand a little bit more about who we are, okay? So hopefully you'll it give you a little bit more understanding that if you're looking for a church, this is one, this, you know, one area. Come to the rest of them or go listen to them online and find out more about Desperation Church, okay? So here's what we've done the last two weeks, and we're going to do it again today. Um, we have put... The, the core values on the screen, and we just say them together because I really wanted to get inside your DNA. I wanted to get inside our bones. If you've been coming to Desperation Church for a long time, uh, we really need you to know from the top down, we want this ingrained in us that this is us, and we need you to buy in and honestly enhance the kingdom of God. Not as much Desperation Church. We do this for the kingdom of God. All right, Desperation Church is second. Jesus is first, okay? And so... That's what we're doing all of these things for. So a lot of you saw signs when you was coming in with words on it. Those are our core values. We want to get it ingrained. So here we go. We're going to put it on the screen. So I'm going to count to three. They're going to flash it up there. And we're going to let you go. And you do it loud and proud, baby. All right? We're going to get after it. Y'all ready? So here we go. One, two, three. Come on. Simplicity. Unity. Fun. Generosity. Family. And that's it. All right, I, wanna, I really want to add another one in there. It feels like six goes by really, really fast. All right? So if you didn't get to hear about, if you're wondering, like, how in the world can you preach on fun, you can go listen to last week's message because we talked about it the week before that. We talked about family. That's why you need to get a community group because that's where you discover your family. Okay? Listen, today, really, this whole series was probably wrapped around this one core value that we're going to talk about today than it was the other ones. All right? So we, we picked out the core value of excellence. Uh, we picked it out actually for today, uh, really because we felt like this would be the time that we have the most people coming to our church uh, on, on this, in this series because basically school's starting back. Some of y'all are hating that with a passion, but welcome back to school. Welcome back to car lines. Dear Lord Jesus, I hope that everybody kept their fingers where they're supposed to be. Listen, uh, I, I know I probably shouldn't say that, but... Y'all real? Y'all know? Y'all been in Coleman parking, parking, like, not parking, but sitting in lines and dodging traffic and getting cussed out. But the big picture is this. So we felt like everybody's back from vacation. Today was going to be a big day. And so we say we want to do this one uh, on excellence. We want to talk about excellence today because ex excellence is probably, out of all the core values that we do, is the most important. You can't have any of the other core values work if excellence is not at the forefront of all of them. The other five cannot be done the way that it needs to be done in Desperation Church and for the kingdom of God if we don't have a mindset of Desperation Church wants to be excellent in everything we do. You can't have unity without striving for excellence. You can't have family without striving for excellence. You can't have fun, enjoy church, without us as people being excellent in what we do. We can't be excellent if we're not generous. Listen, generosity, excellence uh, comes before generosity. It comes before simplicity. So everything we do is wrapped around excellence. Listen, excellence is not something that can be built overnight. I would love for y'all to roll out of bed and like, woohoo, let's go to church today and let's be excellent. Woo! Listen, there's not a person in this room that owns an organization that, that, that can teach your people how to be excellent 
overnight. Basically, what's got to happen is it's got to become a mindset. It's a changing of a mindset. For us, it's a changing of a mindset of how we do church. It's, it's who we're focused on. It's who we're thinking about. We should be Jesus first, others second. And because of that, we want to be excellent with those things. Listen, you got to change the culture. It's culture. It's changing the mindset. It's changing culture. It's got to be built from the top down. It's got to start with me. That's why I think it's very important that we do this series. It's probably different, more different than any kind of series you've ever really heard in church because really it's kind of a leadership deal, trying to teach us how to lead for Jesus. All right? And so I'm hoping you're getting something out of it. And maybe you can take this back to your job. All right? You should be able to take this back to your job today. We'll talk more about that in just a little bit. So if there's any core value at our church that we need you to get as a church, it's going to be excellence. All right? So our desire as a staff, for, 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 for our church, for you guys to understand our desire as a staff is we don't want to be another church in a city. We don't want to be just another church in a community. We want to lead our cities. We don't want to just be a building where people come to on Sundays and Wednesdays and leave. We want to be a church that influences cities and communities on a regular basis. And as crazy as it sounds, we want to make businesses stronger. We want to help lower crime rates. We want to help slow down an in addiction. We want to help save marriages. We want the city government coming to us with questions for, uh, and, and things for us to pray for for the city. We want Desperation Church to help other churches that may need help. We want our school systems to learn from people at our church. Why do I say this? Why do I want to be a church that leads cities, that leads communities, that leads states, that leads nations? Why do I want to do that? Why do we say this? Because we have the answer. We have the answer to leadership. We have the answer to leadership. Why is that? Because we follow the greatest leader that's ever lived on the planet Earth, and his name is Jesus. So if anybody should, should lead, it should be us because we have the one that's the greatest leader leading us. So we should be great leaders in our communities and in our cities. Listen, we can't make our cities and communities stronger. Uh, the only way we can do that, we can make our cities and our communities stronger when we lead well. You got to lead well. You got to lead healthy. And we only lead well when we gain influence and respect from the people in our cities and our communities. And that can only come when it happens with a consistent passion for excellence. A consistent passion for excellence. Now listen, if you make up Desperation Church and you're a part of Desperation your Church and you're, you're even further than that, you're part of the Connect team, I'm hoping and praying that you're getting what I'm saying. Because God's not just called us to lead Desperation Church. He's called us to lead for the kingdom of God. And he's called us to Coleman, Alabama and Jasper and soon to be Hayden and Arab and the other places that we're going to eventually one year. He's called us there not to just be another church. He's called us to lead. And we need you to lead. And you can only do that when you live excellent. Listen, we're not excellent to make the name, to make a name for Desperation Church. We're excellent because we, as the church, represent Jesus. We're excellent because we represent Jesus. Not because we're trying to make a name for Desperation Church. We want to make, it, make a name for Jesus. That's why we do what we do. There should never, ever, 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 everybody say ever. ever. Be another organization out there that is more excellent in the way they do things than the church. Why? Because we serve the greatest of all. There's great CEOs. There's great bosses. There's, there's great, great men and women out there that can lead organizations, but we serve the greatest of all. We're led by the greatest of all, so we should be the ones that lead at the forefront, the church. I'm not, I say this every week, I'm not responsible for other churches, but I am responsible for Desperation Church. So as a leader, I want to do everything I can as a pastor that shepherds, to shepherd you and lead in excellence. Why? Because we carry his name. And it's important. It's valuable. We represent Jesus. That's why we work hard to be focused on details. And we do things with passion because we have a mission like no other organization in the world. 
Let me ask you something, Connect Team. When you come to church, do you come with a zeal and a passion because I am here to serve King Jesus? Some of y'all think, uh uh, I gotta keep the nursery. Are you kidding me? <laughs> changing diapers? That's hard. Yeah, but mamas and daddies are coming here getting saved while you're changing dirty diapers. Why? Because you're, you're, you're leading for King Jesus. It's a big deal. Listen, we want our church to lead well with excellence. Don't you want to be a part of a church that leads communities, that leads cities? Don't you want to be a part of something like that? You can be. Why ain't you joined in with us yet? Y'all getting me way ahead of myself. Listen, we want our church to lead well with excellence. It's our job. It's, it's, it's my job as a pastor. It's our job as a staff to demonstrate that. But also as leaders, we're to teach uh, we're, we're to teach the importance of excellence and help ingrain that into you, into our culture. Listen, I don't care how good our systems and structures are. I don't care how good other organizations' systems and structures are. I don't care how good other churches' systems and structures are. Systems cannot lead in and of themselves. Structures cannot lead in and of themselves. We work hard to create systems and structures for you to get inside of to work. Do you know God's a God of order? And so we want to be a church as a church of order, not disorder, so that God can use us and place you where you can be used best with your gifts for the kingdom of God. Here's why, listen, systems cannot lead, structures cannot lead. It's passionate people who care about the details, who desire excellence, who have a passion for the kingdom of God, and who have a passion for their calling and our calling as a church to lead well. Listen, we use these systems and structures that we put in place to honestly change the world. And the only way that they will change the world is if the people are bought into what God wants you to do. People are the ones that lead, not systems and structures. That's why you got to come here with the right attitude. You come here for Jesus. So we need you to listen today, and we need us together as the body of Christ to go change the world. So we need to set a strong standard for excellence that gives us influence and respect so that when people come calling on us and asking us questions because from the outside looking in, they recognize there's something different about their church. You know what's different? It's the excellence. Why? Because we, we serve a great God, and so we want to do everything we can to represent him well. And so when they come asking, what are y'all doing at y'all church? We can give them Jesus, not systems and structures. Now, we'll give them systems and structures, but we got Jesus right in the middle of it. It's a big deal. This is what Colossians 3, 23 through 24 says, and I could use a ton of different scripture. Now this, listen, it, 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 you don't even have to use this scripture for, for church. You, you need to use this scripture for your job also. You need to use this scripture as, as a child of God. If you're a believer, if you call yourself a Christian, you need to use this for you. Listen to what it says. It says, work willingly at whatever you do as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. So in other words, when you go to your job and you call yourself a Christian, even though you may hate your boss and the, the people around you, which I hope you don't hate because that's what Christians don't do that, all right? Dislike strongly, all right? You still serve them. Why? Because you represent God. It says, remember that the Lord will give you an inheritance as a reward. Did you hear that? When you work at your job or when you work inside the church, and you, you do your job, no matter where it's at, whether it's in a factory, driving a truck, wh whether you own your own business, whether you're a teacher, whether you're a doctor, you, you do your job for the purpose as working unto God. Why? What happens when you do it? The Bible says God will give you an inheritance and will give you a reward. He will bless you when you do your job as unto him. So we're taking this passage, when we do our job as a church, we're working as unto him. So when I come to church, I'm not dreading it because I get an opportunity to work as unto him. I get to work as unto God. It's a good thing. Remember the Lord will give you an inheritance as your reward and that the master you are serving is Christ. Listen, if you're here today and you call yourself Christian, and you wear on your, on your chest in every way possible that I'm a follower of Jesus. Can I go ahead and throw this out there to you? Everybody at your church is watching you. You're in a fishbowl whether you like it or not. And they're judging 
your walk and how you are, and I hate to put the pressure on you, try being a pastor every now and then. Listen, I don't, I don't like car lines either. I, I'm glad I got tinted windows. Listen, the big picture is, <laughs> is everybody's watching you. They're waiting for you to fall. That's why you need to be excellent at what you, if you call yourself a Christian. I remember there was a guy that worked with us at Coca-Cola uh, when I worked at Coke, and every time we'd go through through to get our, our trucks checked out to go out into the cities and stuff to unload the Cokes. There was a guy in there that checked our trucks and handed out devotions every single morning on a piece of paper. He ran it off, got there before everybody else, handed out devotions, but he was the meanest person in the plant. I mean, mean as a snake. And there were people that literally told me, if he represents church and he represents Jesus, I'm not going to have nothing to do with it. So after I got saved and he was mean to other people around me, he tried to hand me one of those devotions. I'm not very nice sometimes. And I told him, like, you can keep that dead gum devotion because until you start acting like a Christian, I don't want your devotions. And all these other people are watching you. I almost said his name. And you don't listen. I don't know if he's still alive. He may not be. He probably died of a heart attack because he's so mean. Listen, <laughs> I said, you need to get Jesus. You need to live out your devotions because people are watching you. And I'm having to take up for Jesus because of you on a regular basis. Now, I was a brand new Christian then. I'd have a lot more for him today. <laughs> the big picture is you call yourself a Christian at work, people watching you. You carry a badge of Jesus. Hey, how much more is it with the church? It's a bigger deal here. People are watching us. People are coming in and checking this church out on a regular basis. We got to do everything we can to be excellent, be on our P's and Q's, every I dotted, every T crossed. And by the way, we're not perfect. We don't have every I dotted and every, every T crossed. We leave a lot of room for failure, but the big picture is we're going to do everything we can to strive for excellence. Why? Because it's a big deal. So the first thing I want you to see is, number one, great organizations live out excellence. Great organizations live out excellence. If you want to apply this to your own place, then do it. If you own a business. Listen, you'll never find a great organization that doesn't have excellence at the top of their list for success. If you walk into a great organization and you're looking around like, wow, man, this place is different. This place is crazy. I would just about step out and say, if I could get into the inside of that company, I would find excellence somewhere in the area of core values in that place. And somebody has taught it well. It, listen, you cannot be successful if you're not excellent. Not unless you're incredibly lucky. And if you do get successful, it won't last long because somebody else could come do it better than you. Listen, all successful organizations work hard at excellence and build it into their culture. It's built. It's not overnight. It's from the top down. We're going to work hard. We're going to put the customer first. We're not thinking about us. We're going to live selfless. We're going to serve people. You know, I, I think of a lot of different organizations that we all love to go to because how they do things is excellence. And, and it's easy to notice their excellence. You know, I think about Disney World. Listen, um, Disney World is excellent what they do, but I hate going there because it's usually hot and the lines are long and I can't afford a fast pass. Uh, and so they had, the last time I went, it said a year of a million dreams. I was like, dear God, this is a year of a million nightmares. This is not cool. But the big picture is I'm blown away when I walk into that place because I'm like, oh my gosh, I've never seen so much excellence in my life. They dream of details. How can we make this the greatest experience on earth for kids and families? How do we make this great? Can I go and throw this out there to you? Disney World should never outdo the church in excellence. I, 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 let me help you understand it a little bit better. Let me, let me bring you in a little bit. Disney World is built around a mouse with a high-pitched voice. <laughs> the church is built around the greatest leader to walk the face of this earth, the one who died for all humanity, Jesus. We have a higher responsibility than Disney World. It's built around the mouth. We're built around Jesus. I'm glad four of you enjoyed that. Listen, we got a responsibility. Some of you are like, boy, this is a good message. I'll be late next week. I hope not. 
I think about Publix. Everybody likes Publix. The prices might be a little hotter, but they're hotter. <laughs> Maybe hot too. Higher. But they have high quality. They put people first. They're going to serve you when you walk in the door, and they're going to serve you all the way out the door. Their prices might be a little bit higher, but we love the way that we're treated when we get there. They're, they're conscious of our time. The convenience they give us is absolutely incredible. They try to add value to you. So we're willing to pay a little bit extra to get good service. Right? You know, I remember when we first moved up here, I heard um, people telling me that, that the Dairy Queen in Coleman's the number one Dairy Queen in the state. I'm like, man, I, I've been to Dairy Queen where I came from. I don't know how that is. Like, and, I, and the Dairy Queen that w- where we was at was, I mean, in Coleman, when we first was like in, in the middle of town. It wasn't even off the interstate. Like, man, there's a lot of people in Coleman County that love to eat some hamburgers. And so I started thinking, like, man, I got to find out why is this Dairy Queen, like, the number one in the state. And I figured it out as soon as I walked in the door. As soon as I walked in the door, the place was clean. It smelled like hamburgers and vanilla. It smelled great. (laughs) Walked in, the people behind the cash register was incredibly polite and nice. The food was excellent. They were conscious of your time. The people was getting in and going to sit down and getting out. Guess what? The bathrooms were clean. Thank you, Jesus, for fast food restaurants that's got clean bathrooms. Listen, when somebody goes in there, I guarantee you, somebody goes in right behind them with some Febreze. Big, big, big construction boys, uh-oh, there goes Bubba. Get, get the Febreze, we're going in behind him. They do it well. Excellent. The food was different than what I had at the other place I was at. It was better. It was quality. And I left there saying, like, they do things excellent. That's why they're number one. They work hard. I think about, um, so, by the way, I know there's a lot of other organizations out there, and if I'm not calling yours out, I'm so sorry. I'm just telling you ones that I've been associated with and have seen. You know, I, I get to be the character coach for Coleman High School Baseball, all right? I get to be, I, I, I kind of do a few things with them in the area of helping develop their kids with character. And that's what we call it. That's what you got to call it in school. I just give them Jesus. But don't tell nobody. Listen. <laughs> but I, I get to be on the inside. And I get to watch Coach Fondren and Coach Patterson and all the other coaches with them. And I get to see how they develop those young men. And what they start with before they start with anything else is character. They would rather build character in your kids and then be great young men when they leave that program than they would be better baseball players. And what makes great baseball players is great character, and they know that. They've got it figured out. And so I watch what they do. There's a great possibility, and I'm going to put pressure on them today, that if you was to go there today as a guest and walk into their locker room, that they, their job as young men is to walk up to you, look you in the eye, shake your hand, introduce themselves, and get to know who you are. They're players. There's a reason why they've, they've been to state finals five out of six times and won two of them. That's why, there's a reason why they're a powerhouse in a little bitty old town in Alabama, baseball powerhouse, because the coaches teach them how to be men of character and teach them excellence. Get your, listen, coach goes off if the locker room is messed up. He goes off. When you leave this place, your locker is going to be as clean as it was when you got here. It's going to be like your mama came in here and cleaned it out. And those bathrooms, if you don't flush the toilets and there's TT left in there, we're going to have words. And he does. He says probably something different than TT, but it's all good. I just offended somebody, somebody super spiritual. I can't believe you said that. You say it to your babies. Listen. <laughs> they take care. It's, it's a reason. I told Caleb Hyson, if you don't make the baseball team, you're going to be the video guy. You're taking water because you're going to be in that program some way, form, or fashion. Because <laughs> I want you to learn how to be a man. It's a big deal. There's a lot. I mean, I could use a lot of different illustrations. And if I didn't use yours, please don't be mad at me. Listen. I know there, 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 there's a lot of things. Listen, the one thing that we do at our church when you go through Connect class is we, we've changed the name from membership to ownership. And some of you might think that's weird. Let me tell you why we do it. And this, a lot of the reason why a lot of other churches use membership is because that's the way it was back in the day. So I'm not trying to kill other churches when I talk about membership, okay? So please, please don't take offense at all. But when you join our church, we will call you an, uh, an owner, not a member. And there's a reason for it. In my opinion, in our opinion, the word membership has more of an idea that as a member, I want somebody to serve me. You're going to serve me. But as an owner, the word owner 
has more of an understanding that this is my home, this is our house, and I will serve others when they come into my home. So we want you to be owners. It's not our job for us to, at least we're to serve each other, but it's not your job to come to church to be served. It's your job to come to church to serve others. If you come to church thinking, what can this church do for me? You got a wrong mindset immediately. Your thought process, thought process, I think I almost cussed. Your thought process should be, what can I, what can, not what can this church do for me, but what can I do for this church? How can I better this church? Because this is your house. You know, I think about uh, me and Leah, you know, we, we, we have, we're, we're owners of our home. Actually, the bank owns our home, but we're trying to, get, get, you know, pay them back. Here's the big picture. If you were to come over to our house, we're going to work overtime. If you was to come to our house, because we own our home, if you was to come to our house, we're going to work overtime to make sure that you have a great experience at our home. We'll make sure that if we know that you are coming, that our house is clean, which my wife already does that. Leah already makes sure it's clean on a regular basis. Trust me. Uh, we're going to put some smell good candles out. It's going to smell delicious in our house. Um, We'll make sure that there's toilet paper on the roll when you get there. That'd be awkward. <laughs> hey, you may have the toilet paper. <laughs> We're going to make sure our kids are on their best behavior, which is incredibly difficult to do. We will bake cookies or something to make sure that you have an incredible time. We'll make sure that you have something to drink. We're going to do everything possible that when you come into our house, because we represent the house we own, that when you come, you have a pleasant, incredible experience at our house. And I bet that if me and my wife and family were to come to your house, it'd be the same way. Why? Because you want to make sure that us coming to your house, that, that we're comfortable, that we're well taken care of, and that you have a great experience at your house. I guarantee it. Not unless there's something crazy with you. Because while we, this, is our, this is what we own. How much more should we do that in God's house? How much more should we as the body of Christ be owners of God's house? We are the caretakers of God's house. This is his. We're the bride of Christ. God's given you gifts to take care of his house. How much more should we want people to have a great experience inside God's house than even our own? That's why we got to do excellent things. We have a high calling and a high responsibility to take care of the people when they come in and visit this house. Why? Because it's not our house. This is God's house, which is a lot more important than your house. We represent the king. So when we serve and do the things that we do here, we realize we got a bigger picture. We're serving God by the way we serve other people. We're owners of his house. We're caretakers. Which leads me to my next point. Which, by the way, because we are owners of this house, because we're caretakers of this house, and because we're excellent at everything we do, people that come into this place for the first time should recognize that there's something different when they come in this place. Number one, it's the presence of God. I'm praying in Jesus' name, but the presence of God inside of you because you're passionate about excellence. Bless you. Listen, point number two leads me to my next point. Excellence is in the details. Excellence is in the details. Listen, I'm a big vision guy. I see big things. I'm blessed to have people around me that is very detailed, that helps us with a lot of things. But there's also a place where I'm kind of halfway narcissistic about details. I get a little crazy sometimes, and the staff knows it. Listen, they know that I'm over the top with details. Um, because, I, really, honestly, I might be a little bit of a nut job, but the, the big picture is, is I understand who we represent as a church. And I have a responsibility to move our church into greatness for the kingdom of God. Not so desperation your church would be great, but so he could be great. Not for our name to be known, but for the name of Jesus to be known. I understand who we represent. And so I feel like we need to be focused on details because if we're not focused on details, then how in the world can we ever be excellent? Did you know that people can look at the outside of a church or a business and a lot of times, what's on the, they, they see what's on the outside and they go ahead and determine what's on the inside. And a lot of times when people see what's on the outside, will never make their way into the inside because they see the outside and the outside ain't full of excellence. So how in the world is the inside going to be excellence? Listen, if you're looking for a place to go and eat lunch and the outside is just nasty and beat up 
and trash everywhere, the grass is high, you're more than likely, I'm going to step out and say, not going to eat at that establishment. You're not going to stop there. You know why? Because you're looking at the outside like, who in there cooking my food? Ain't no way. If it looks just bad out here, ain't no way I'm going in there to eat. I kind of look at it that way with us. You know, one thing with, when one de listen to me, this is gigantic. When one detail is not excellent, it can disqualify the whole organization. You might have incredible food, but if your bathrooms are nasty, there's a great possibility people ain't coming back. Now, I know some of y'all are like, man, what kind of message is this? Is this a leadership message? Kind of. But I'm giving you a leadership message because we follow the greatest leader, Jesus. You might have incredible food and incredible product at your place, but if you've got terrible customer service, they're not coming back. They won't be back. Same way with the church. That's why we got to pay attention to details. If you're rude and mean to people at this place, then there's a great possibility those people that visit Desperation Church aren't coming back. And we got a bigger responsibility there. They're just trying to sell their product. Here, we're trying to give away Jesus and the kingdom. We want them to come back and get set free. You know, one thing that our staff knows is in the area of excellence, I tell them all the time, Listen, there should never, ever, ever be a time that we have old dates on banners hanging up with our events somewhere when the date's over. Shouldn't happen. Take them down ASAP. Now, there may be a time every now and then that we have one up for a day or two, but by golly, they better be coming down quick or I'm calling somebody like, hey, give me a knife cutter because I'm going to cut them down. Now, I've cut down a many of them, pulled off the side of the road and cut them down because it's not excellent. Drives me crazy when churches in, in April still have Christmas stuff on their signs. I saw it not too long ago, going down 69. Welcome to our Christmas cantata. It's April. When do y'all sell? Like, what, what kind of Christmas is this? I hate old dates. It doesn't represent the king well. It's the details. Listen, our grass down there at the downtown, there's not much of it, but it's got to get cut. More than once a week. And there are times that I, I've drawn by, drove by and all, like overnight the grass shot up. And I'm on the phone like, hey, who cuts our grass? They need to get out there today and cut it. If they don't, I'm going to go cut it. Because I don't, I don't like the way it looks. I've cut our grass many a time. Because it's high. And it doesn't represent Jesus well. It doesn't rep represent our church well. We've got to have curb appeal, baby. Which is kind of hard with the grass we got. But it's all good. You know, uh, staff and leaders... Staff and leaders who can and will. We, look, all our staff, every one of our staff, not unless they're telling me lies, we park as far away from the church as possible so that we can give up all the parking places here to our guests and to you. And, and I believe that leaders on our Connect team, well, by the way, we're fixing to have to start doing that because our parking lot's getting full because our numbers are way up right now. We're going to start parking up there so we give more people our room. And I would challenge you to do that. Listen. It kind of drives me crazy, to be honest with you. I think Pastor Parkin is dumb. I want Pastor Parkin at the front door. Now, which, by the way, if you're old Pastor Parkin at the front door, I just called him dumb. I should not have said that. That's not nice. That's what he probably always has done. But the big picture is, is, is that true leaders always eat last. True leaders eat last. True leaders are servant. The greatest leaders are those who serve. So I want to do everything I can. I'm not trying to brag by no means. I'm just telling you this is who we are. This is who you should be. We eat last. We're going to park at the top. We're going to be one of the first ones here, one of the last ones to leave. Why? Because that's what leaders do. We're excellent. You know, one thing that drives me crazy on our building right now, actually, I, it, they, it came off Friday. On our downtown campus, there's mildew that was on the side of the building. And every time I drove by and saw it, I'd start cringing. I, was, I mean, like, I was like, oh, why ain't the mildew gone? We got to get the mildew gone. We got to get the mildew gone. Like, when are we going to get somebody to pressure wash the mildew off the side of the building? That looks terrible. Thank you, Jesus, for whoever came and washed it this past week because it looks like a clean, shiny new baby. All right, somebody cleaned the mildew off. Why? Because I, I'm, I'm crazy about details. The devil's in the details. Don't you think God should be greater in the details than the enemy? He knows that if he can destroy the details, that he can keep people from coming and checking out what God wants to do in their life. So I get a little over the top. Listen, let me, let me, uh, let me talk about a couple of our Connect Team leaders here real quick. 
Listen, we want this culture to get inside you to where you are such an owner of this church that you take initiative to do things on your own. They don't even know I'm going to say this. How about last week was the, was the midnight run? And they did all this in the parking lot at midnight on Friday night. And because of that, somebody had kicked mulch. They'd taken mulch, and it was all over our sidewalks, all over the place. One of our Connect team leaders named Mark Tant saw all that, and he realized that people were going to be walking up and, up, up and down these up and down these, uh, these sidewalks, and he, on his own, he went and got a broom, and he shoveled, and he, and he swept all, every bit of the, of, the, of the mulch back up into the flower bed, covered up the plastic where it was at. Which I thought, like, he did it on his own. We didn't have to say nothing to him. Like, this guy gets it. It's beautiful. You know, I, I think about, look, I call that tree out there the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I hate that thing, all right? Out in front. Because it spits berries out all over the floor, all over the ground. Like they're little, little bowl berries. I don't know what they are, all over the place. But you know what? We got people here at this church that take it upon themselves to get a blower out and blow those things off every week before you get here. That's excellence. That's, they do it on their own. That means somebody's getting the culture. Because if they don't do it, guess who's going to do it? One of us on staff's going to do it, but they do it on their own. Thank you, Jesus. It's a big deal. Listen, here's what we ask of leaders at our church to buy into because excellence is in the details. By the way, if you're here today and you've kind of failed at some of these things, number one, we leave room for failure. And I'm not thinking of one person, I promise you. I don't know who you are because some of you are going to be like, oh my gosh, that's me. L listen, uh, so don't think I'm talking about you. And by the way, before I lay that, I'm talking to a lot of the Connect team, by the way, and if you're wanting to join Desperation Church, this is what we're expecting of you. But let me just go ahead and make a disclaimer. It's incredibly difficult. Just, just on our end, it's very difficult to lead volunteers. You're not getting paid to come and do the things you do at church. It's very difficult to lead volunteers. Employees, we can just fire them. Okay, it's supposed to be funny. We ain't fired anybody in a long time. Listen. You can't fire a volunteer. It's hard to even have a tough conversation. We're like, hey, we really need you to show up on time. Would you please be here? I mean, I, I'm just giving you free time anyway. You're lucky you give me five minutes before we start. I mean, like, it's, it's, it's very, very difficult. So we're kind of in a bind at times because we get stuck in hard places and we can't talk to sensitive people because, now, if it, if it was somebody that worked for me, we'd have, a, we'd have a conversation. But we don't pay volunteers. So you need to understand you're not working for Andy Heiss or Desperation Church. You're volunteering. It's not really, I don't even like the word volunteer. You're, you're, you're a leader for Jesus. So that should be enough conviction for you to do things excellent, do things right. So here's what we expect at our church whenever you serve at Desperation Church. If you sign up, show up. If you sign up, show up. When you sign up to serve and don't show up, it puts everybody else in a bind. Listen, we understand there are emergencies and it's going to happen more than once. It will happen. But please don't make a habit of it that every time I just don't want to serve today, I'm just not going to show up. There are people here that need you, that's depending on you, that's expecting you to show up. And when you don't show up, man, we're leaving people out. Excellence says if I show up, if I, I mean, if I, if I sign up, I'm going to show up. I would say be on time. We, on, we say on staff, one of our common words that we say on staff, if you're on time, you're late. If you're on time, you're late. We ask people to be in their places at Desperation Church 30 minutes before the service starts because there are people who are coming in that need a smile and a word of encouragement and a high five. There's people that's coming in early that morning because they need a word from God. They're going through a lot of pain, and you're there to give them just a minute to help them lose the thought process of the pain they're going through. But when you're not there and you're not on time showing up the way you need to, then we're missing a lot of people that need you desperately. Be a person who keeps their word. It's really hard to find people that keep their word these days. If you, get, if you give your word, excellence says, I keep my word. And if you, if you can't keep your word because something happens, at least be thoughtful enough to call in and say, hey, I can't make it early if possible. If not, there's emergencies that happen too. We understand, promise you, we leave tons of room for grace and, and failure. I promise you. This is what we're asking. This is what we need. Not, for, not just for desperate church, but for the kingdom. This is who we are. This is our culture. Be selfless when you serve here. 
It's about the people who are coming in the door. Listen, our drive, our passion, every time we serve in our church should be to make sure that we're adding value to the people who are walking in our doors. We're smiling at them, speaking words of life to them, making sure their experience is a good one. We're not, listen, we're not on our cell phones. We're not talking to, uh, to each other while other people are coming in. We're focused on the people coming, not on each other. We're focused on guests. We're focused on, on, on people that have no clue about our church, what's going on. Listen, there, we have no clue what's going on in the people's lives that are coming through our doors. There's people in this room right now that we have no clue what's going on in your life, but God does. We have an opportunity to meet them where they are. Once again, people's pain is large in a lot of people's lives in this room. We have an opportunity to help them forget about it for just a minute. I give them a word of encouragement, love them. But if you're not where you're supposed to be, we, we miss them. That's why we need to be excellent at what we do. Listen, when we serve at Desperation Church, we cannot be self-consumed when people are coming in D.C. in Desperation Church. We need all eyes on the people around us being selfless and excellent. Third and last thing, excellence sets you apart. Excellence sets you apart. Daniel 6, 3 through 4 says this. Daniel soon proved himself more capable than all the other administrators. Do so you remember Daniel? And high officers. He set himself apart. He proved himself more capable. Because of Daniel's great ability, the king made plans to place him over the entire empire. Then the other administrators became envious and jealous, and high officers began searching for some fault in the way Daniel was handling his government affairs. But they couldn't find anything to criticize or condemn him, so they made things up. They made things up on him. He was faithful. In other words, faithful is another word for excellent. Always responsible, another word for excellence, and completely trustworthy. Kept his word, another word for excellence. You know what excellence will do? It'll set you apart. Excellence will produce dislike. Sometimes, sometimes it will produce hate. There's a great possibility that there are people in this room that own organizations that hate other organizations because honestly, they're doing it better than you and you don't like them and you're trying to figure something out wrong with them. But whenever you do stuff excellent, people will hate you. They won't like you. Why? Because you're making them look bad and lie, being lazy, but man, you're working hard. They're not going to like you. You know, I think about organizations that are ran well or organizations that win, that are hated. And there's a lot of them. Think about the Yankees. They're hated. Even if they have a bad season, they're still hated. Think about the Dallas Cowboys, America's most hated football team and most loved. It's kind of split right down the middle. They're, they're winners at one time. And they've been struggling lately, but they're still hated. Notre Dame is another team that's hated. I think Auburn and Alabama fans both in this room can both say we hate Notre Dame. Why? Because at one time they were full of winning. They're winners. There's a team in our state right now that is hated with a passion. I'm not going to say who it is because if I did, you would be mad and not come back next week. Okay, I'm going to say it. Sanford University. Y'all hate them. I'm just kidding. Okay, that went, I'm not going to use it next service. Listen, so... Big picture is, there's a lot of organizations that are hated because they do things right. There are churches that are literally hated by other churches because they do it well. They do it well, you're gonna be disliked. So there's so many more. Think about the organization that you dislike the most. Are they your competition? Are they doing it better than you? You know what I'd say to you if that's you, if you just happen to own a business? You know what I'd say to you? I'd say instead of hating them, I'd let go of my pride and I'd call them and I'd say, you teach me everything you're doing. I want to learn from you. I want to learn what you're doing. I want to get better. There's a lot of restaurants up on 157 up there that I want them to call Dairy Queen to learn from them. Like, you need to call Mike and Samantha Way. They'll help you a lot because y'all are bad. Listen, excellence, not only does it cause divide with dislike and hate. It also, excellence creates influence. Excellence creates influence. Excellence sets apart. People take notice. You become influential. 
Daniel was raised to second in leadership in all of Babylon because of his excellence. He gained influence with the leaders and with the people. God raised him up. You know, remember what the Bible says, that whenever you work for God, that he will reward you and give you an inheritance. It might not be in your timing. It might not have been in Daniel or Joseph. Remember Joseph? In their timing, but they did things excellent. God raised them up. Raised Daniel up to number two in all of Babylon. Desperation Church, we want to influence others to Jesus. John Maxwell says leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. Leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. We want to lead people to Jesus. The way we lead is being excellent. Excellence is in the details. We have a responsibility to lead our cities and our counties and our communities by setting ourselves apart because we want to pay attention to the details and to live a life of excellence. Why not for Desperation Church, but for Jesus? When we can gain influence in the lives of people, we begin to live our life with a higher purpose and we're being rewarded with God trusting us with more responsibility to change the lives of the people and the world around us. We gotta gain, look, desperate church, we've gotta gain respect and influence by the way we work hard and the way we love people and the way we're excellent and the way we do that. We can't do this just as a staff. We need you, you as a church body to join in with us and together influence a city, a community, a county, a state, and a nation and a world. Let's not live our lives. Our one little short life, let's not live it average. Let's live it excellent. Since your body of Christ, live it excellent at your jobs. Since your body of Christ, desperation church, let's, as a church, let's be excellent in what we do. Why? Because we want to make Jesus famous. We want people to know him. We want people to experience freedom and abundant life. All right? And we want, we want you to be caretakers of this place and let God use you in large ways. Would you please go with us, please? We can't have the other core values if we don't walk in excellence. It's going to, hey, listen, it's built. It's going to take a long process. You're going to be reminded of this on a regular basis, but we're going to be excellent in everything we do. As much as we're going to strive for it anyway. All right? We're not going to be perfect. We're going to strive for it. All right? Let's pray. Father, we love you.